Hello students a very good evening to all of you i hope you all are doing good and preparing well for the examination i know the notifications are not out yet and this might create certain kind of anxieties in your mind but let me tell you one thing students hard work done never goes wasted therefore believe in yourself keep working hard and trust the process with this let's get started with today's session which is the finance answer writing class in today's class we are going to take up a very important topic from your exam perspective that is the basel norms direct question has been asked both in your objective part as well as in the descriptive part of your finance section but today the question will be presented to you in a more twisted manner so that you are able to make use of your analytical skills as well see students what is my objective of coming here my objective is not just to give you a question explain and go my purpose is also to stretch you out of your comfort zones put in forward put in place questions that challenges and make you think relate and also make use of your analytical as well as cognitive faculties so that you are not just exam ready but also very clear and confident about the concept having said that students such question which i will present in front of you is also going to immensely help to cover or tackle the interview which is the final stage smoothly so let's get started so the question is basically you can say that it is of an analytical sort whereby first and foremost they have given you a brief introduction about the basel norms the introduction of the basel 3 norms in response to the global financial crisis theek hai uske baad inhone aapko kuch parameters diye hain and based on that parameters for example tier 1 capital tier 2 capital counter cyclical capital of balance sheet activities based on these you need to answer which bank a b c is better explain simple question hai if you are clear with the basel 3 norms the percentage of capital required to be maintained or prescribed by the basel 3 norms then you are good to go to answer such a question so let's get started with the question so let me read the question for you the question says that the global financial crisis of 2007-8 exposed the weaknesses of the international financial system as a result the basel 3 norms were introduced with more stricter regulations and supervisions to maintain and enhance the financial resilience and stability of the economy to ab yahan pe dekh sakte so they are just building up the story whereby they are talking about how basel 3 norms were introduced in response to the global financial crisis of 2007-8 theek hai uske baad they are saying that in regard in this regard that the story build up that they have done consider the following information about three banks a b and c which are identical in all terms and are operating in india so they have given you three banks a b c which are identical and they are operating in india so their level uh, so the activities the kind of uh, lending that they are doing everything is similar however there are certain changes with regards to certain parameters parameters such as tier 1 capital tier 2 capital basically hum bol sakte hain yahan pe hame kya karna hai crar ar ratio the capital adequacy ratio ko dekhna hai uske baad they have talked about counter cyclical capital buffer and also of balance sheet activities now based on these parameters you need to answer which bank is better and you also need to explain because this question is of 15 marks or a 600 mark question see i know aise analytical based ya fir case based questions exam mein nahi aate generic statement dekar aap se direct questions puche jate hain but this question is going to help you first and foremost understand what tier 1 tier 2 capital is all about what do you mean by counter cyclical capital buffer of balance sheet activities and also how are you going to compare or find out which bank is better in terms of safety and soundness based on these parameters theek hai to agar hum yahan pe dekhe first and foremost you should understand ki yahan pe hame crar ratio ki baat kiya ja raha hai basel 3 norms what does basel 3 norms talks about how does what does it talks about crar ratio you all know that basel norms has prescribed a 10.5% crar ratio and rbi has put in forward a more stringent one uh, that is 11.5% for scheduled commercial banks in india if we talk about tier 1 capital basel norms prescribes 6% rbi on the other hand a uh, higher percentage which is 7% tier 2 capital is required to be maintained as a minimum of 2% by both basel 3 norms as well as rbi theek hai 
तो ये हमको पता है एंड अब बेस ऑन दिस यू कैन सी दैट ऑल ऑफ दीज थ्री बैंक ए बी सी आर कंप्लाइंग विद बोथ टीयर वन कैपिटल रिक्वायरमेंट एज वेल एज टीयर टू कैपिटल रिक्वायरमेंट या फिर उनसे ज्यादा ही है ठीक है इसका क्या मतलब हुआ सो हाउ आर यू गोइंग टू कंपेयर सो यू आर गोइंग टू कंपेयर बेस्ड अपॉन कि किस बैंक ने ज्यादा कैपिटल मेंटेन किया हुआ है सो इफ यू कैन सी बैंक ए हैज द हाईएस्ट परसेंटेज 14 परसेंट एज कंपेयर टू बी एंड सी सो वी कैन से दैट ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ टीयर वन कैपिटल बैंक ए इज बेटर पर हमें सी आर ए आर रेशो के टर्म्स में बात करना है इन दैट केस वी विल टॉक अबाउट अ कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ टीयर वन एंड टीयर टू कैपिटल या फिर आप अलग भी लिख सकते हो दैट इज योर वे ऑफ प्रेजेंटिंग द आंसर वट आई वुड डू इज आई नीड टू कंपेयर द बैंक सो आई विल मेक यूज ऑफ कैपिटल एडुकेसी रेशियो टीयर वन कैपिटल ऐसे कंपेयर नहीं करते अगर आपने पढ़ा हो हम कैपिटल एडुकेसी रेशियो पे कंपेयर करते हैं एन पी ए पे कंपेयर करते हैं द एसेट क्वालिटी पे हम कंपेयर कर रहे होते हैं हम लेवरेज पे कंपेयर कर रहे होते हैं हम प्रॉफिटेबिलिटी लेवल पे कंपेयर कर रहे होते हैं राइट इफ यू टॉक अबाउट टीयर टू द हाईएस्ट इज बीइंग मेंटेन्ड बाय बी व्हिच इज नाइन परसेंट बट इफ यू टॉक अबाउट कि बेटर कौन सा है टीयर वन टीयर टू देन वी ऑल नो दैट टीयर वन कैपिटल इज द मोस्ट सेफेस्ट कैपिटल दैट एनी बैंक इज रिक्वायर्ड टू मेंटेन देफर इफ अ कंपेरिजन और इफ देर इज अ चॉइस बिटवीन टीयर वन एंड टीयर टू वी आर ऑलवेज गोइंग टू टिक फॉर द टीयर वन कैपिटल so based on that you can frame an answer and you can provide both the case scenario and then you can talk about which bank is better the second is about the counter cyclical capital buffer i hope you all know about ccyb the counter cyclical capital buffer what are these buffer naam se hi clear ho jana chahiye so these are additional reserves that were introduced in the basel 3 norms jiske andar uh, the basel norms talked about how banks are required to maintain certain percentage of capital in terms of tier 1 so 0 to 2.5 percent capital is to be maintained by the name counter cyclical capital buffer when are these to be maintained whenever the banking is performing or operating in an expansion phase so jab bhi boost ho raha hai ya fir expansion phase mein hai banks should maintain counter cyclical capital buffer so that in case of any recessionary situation or in case of any exigencies in case of any problem in the economy such buffers could be used to make the banks resilient from such economic and financial uh, crisis or let's say any financial economic shocks theek hai i hope counter cyclical capital buffer aapko samajh aa gaya the third is off balance sheet activities i know off balance sheet activities ko lekar logo ko bahut confusion bhi hoti hai aur darr bhi lagta hai ki pata nahi ye kya term hai so let me explain what this term off balance sheet activity is all about theek hai so let's talk about off balance sheet activity uh, so these are nothing but these are like certain kind of contingency so banks or other financial institutions engage themselves in certain kind of activities right some kind of activities they know what is going to be the actual impact on the bank whether it is going to create certain kind of asset or an obligation for the bank agar unko pata hai ki actually kya create karega that will be known as own balance sheet activity or wo aapke balance sheet ka part ban jayegi but there are certain exposure there are certain activities that banks indulge them into but they do not know the outcome or the impact of such off balance sheet activity that is going to create upon the banking system kya activities hoti hai so these are nothing but contingent assets and liabilities iska kya matlab hua let's suppose a bank engages itself or enters into a derivative instrument now the bank do not know that whether it is going to earn profit or it is going to make losses so this create certain kind of contingency for the bank so in future if the bank realizes certain return from that derivative some risky derivative in that case that will create an asset for the bank however if banks are exposed to certain kind of ab- obligation in the future let's suppose it faces certain losses on the derivative instrument so it will have to make payment for the for those losses or will have to incur those losses or for in that case you all must have heard about factoring and forfeiting whereby the bank provides guarantees letter of credit provide karti hai ki agar uh, importer ne payment nahi kiya in that case 
or a debtor did pay then in that case all losses or the guarantee is provided by the banks if let's suppose the debtor or the borrower do not make the payment in that case in future such obligation may arise from the banks and these are known as contingent liabilities or off balance sheet exposures of the bank so one thing is very clear that in case of off balance sheet activities it creates certain kind of exp uh, exposures for the banks and these exposures are usually considered to be high risk activities and we do not know the impact of these so aap kaise measure karoge for that we use a conversion factor right so depending upon the level of the risk these activities have aap unko ek risk ek weight assign karte ho and you convert them using this conversion factor into a potential on balance sheet activity ठीक है ऑन बैलेंस शीट एक्टिविटी में आपने उनको कन्वर्ट किया एंड देन यू ट्राई टू एसेस व्हाट लेवल ऑफ रिस्क कुड हैव और कुड व्हाट लेवल ऑफ रिस्क यू आर एक्सपोज टू ठीक है सो बेस्ड ऑन दिस इसका क्या मतलब हुआ ऑल दोज बैंक्स हु हैव अ लोअर एक्सपोजर टू दीज ऑफ बैलेंस शीट एक्टिविटीज विल बी इन अ बेटर सिचुएशन विल नॉट बी एक्सपोज टू मोर रिस्क दे अगर हम इस चीज को देखें और आपको मीनिंग क्लियर है देन यू कैन वेरी सिंपली राइट दैट बैंक सी विल परफॉर्म बेटर एज कंपेयर टू बैंक बी एंड फॉलोड बाई बैंक ए सिमिलरली अगर बफर की बात करें तो जो ज्यादा मेनटेन करेगा वो ज्यादा बेटर परफॉर्म करेगा दे फोर बैंक सी विल बी परफॉर्मिंग बेटर एज कंपेयर टू बैंक बी फॉलोड बाई बैंक ए तो यहां से हमें यह चीज तो क्लियर हो गई दैट फर्स्ट एंड फॉरमोस्ट वी नो विच बैंक इज गोइंग टू परफॉर्म बेटर ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ दीज पैरामीटर्स एंड ऑल्सो आपको एक्सप्लेन करना है तो एक्सप्लेनेशन में क्या करोगे यू आर गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन व्हाट इज काउंटर साइक्लिकल कैपिटल बफर ऑफ बैलेंस शीट एक्टिविटीज क्या होती है टीयर वन टीयर टू कैपिटल क्या होते हैं एंड देन इंडिविजुअली यू आर गोइंग टू कंपेयर ऑल दीज थ्री बैंक्स एंड आंसर इन योर ओपिनियन विच यू थिंक वुड बी द बेटर बैंक इन ऑर्डर टू कम इन ऑर्डर टू लाइक टू बी रेजिलियंट एंड स्ट्रॉन्ग इनफ फ्रॉम एनी काइंड ऑफ एक्सटर्नल और फाइनेंशियल शॉक्स ठीक है सो आई होप द क्वेश्चन इज क्लियर टू यू एंड सो वी कैन स्टार्ट विद द आंसर द आंसर दैट आई हैव रिटर्न और आपको कुछ ये जो टर्म्स है इंपॉर्टेंट टर्म्स आपको समझ में आ गई होंगी राइट एंड दीज आर इंपॉर्टेंट टर्म्स और आपको ये ध्यान रखना है बिकॉज सच टर्म्स और सच क्वेश्चन विल अपेयर इन योर एग्जामिनेशन ठीक है सो लेट्स मूव फॉरवर्ड टू द आंसर सो आप आंसर कैसे लिखोगे सबसे पहले हम आंसर्स की एक बेसिक फ्रेम लाइन बना लेते हैं फ्रेमवर्क बना लेते हैं फर्स्ट एंड फॉरमोस्ट विल टॉक अबाउट दी बेजल नॉर्म्स कि बेजल नॉर्म्स क्या थे राइट बेजल नॉर्म्स क्यों इंट्रोड्यूस हुआ था इन रिस्पांस टू द ग्लोबल फाइनेंशियल क्राइसिस देन विल टॉक अबाउट व्हाट बेजल नॉर्म्स हैज प्रिस्क्राइब फॉर बैंक इन टर्म्स ऑफ कैपिटल एडुकेसी रेशियो काउंटर साइक्लिकल कैपिटल बफर कितना होना चाहिए एंड ऑल ऑफ दीज थिंग्स देन इंडिविजुअली विल टेक अप थ्री पैरामीटर्स द फर्स्ट वुड बी द कैपिटल एडुकेसी रेशियो और यू कैन से द टीयर वन कैपिटल एंड टीयर टू कैपिटल उसके बेसिस पे वी आर गोना एक्सप्लेन बोथ दीज एंड आर बी आईज रेगुलेशन and then we'll compare these three banks second parameter that we are going to take or talk about in our answer is that of counter cyclical capital buffer again you are going to explain what counter cyclical capital buffer is and then you are going to analyze ki on the basis of what factors you are considering a bank to be better than another bank theek hai and thirdly we'll take up take up the third parameter which is the off balance sheet activity theek hai aur usko thoda explain karke fir wahi hum process follow karenge and then we will tell which bank is better by making an analysis based on whatever explanation you have given simple and then you can uh, finish your answer with two or three concluding lines so let's see how we can write this answer again students this is just a base basic model answer that i have prepared for you your way of writing could differ right so the answer begins with the uh, introduction of the basel norms whereby i have said that the global financial crisis shook the entire world and exposed the fundamental inherent problem in the banking system introduction de diya ab maine basel 3 norms ke bare mein bataya hai and i have also talked about how it is the latest iteration of the basel accords or basel accords kon lekar aaya tha basel committee on banking supervision why was basel 3 norms introduced with the aim to improve the financial system's ability to withstand or to be resilient enough from any kind of economic shocks and improve banks management of liquidity risk we all know global financial crisis ke time pe liquidity risk was one of the major problem so basel 3 norms were introduced so that bank could improve their level of uh, cushion so that they could manage the liquidity liquidity risk in a much better manner 
ठीक है नाउ डायरेक्टली जंपिंग अपॉन द इंडिकेटर्स सो हैव आई रिटर्न इन दी अबव क्वेश्चन इंडिकेटर्स और पैरामीटर्स सच एज कैपिटल एडुकेसी मेंटेनेंस ऑफ काउंटर साइक्लिकल कैपिटल बफर एंड एक्सपोजर टू ऑफ बैलेंस शीट एक्टिविटीज आर गिवन इन ऑर्डर टू एग्जामिन द सेफ्टी एंड साउंडनेस ऑफ द बैंक सो ये आपने बता दिया कि ये मेजर दिया है मुझे बताना है कौन सा बैंक बेटर है तो मे ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ द सेफ्टी एंड साउंडनेस ऑफ द बैंक सो दैट नो सच फाइनेंशियल क्राइसिस नो सच बैंक इज अफेक्टेड बाय एनी काइंड ऑफ फाइनेंशियल क्राइसिस आई एम गोइंग टू कंपेयर all these parameters on the basis of safety and soundness so starting with the very first one that is maintenance of tier 1 and tier 2 capital first and foremost you are going to talk about what tier 1 and tier 2 capital is all about whereby you will also going to talk about how or which uh, capital is better tier 1 better hota hai ya tier 2 better hota hai and basel norms prescriptions by rbi दोनों के प्रिस्क्रिप्शन मेंशन कर देंगे ठीक है सो आई हैव स्टार्टेड दैट द टोटल कैपिटल दैट अ बैंक इज सपोज्ड टू हैव कैन बी क्लासिफाइड इनटू टू कैटेगरीज फर्स्ट इज टियर वन कैपिटल व्हिच इज आल्सो नोन एज द कोर कैपिटल तो मैंने यहां पे जो इंपॉर्टेंट हाईलाइट्स है कीवर्ड्स है उसको यहां पे मेंशन करने की कोशिश करी है और मैंने टियर वन टियर टू कैपिटल को डिस्टिंग्विश करने की कोशिश करी है द टियर वन कैपिटल इज नोन एज द कोर कैपिटल वेयर इज टियर टू कैपिटल इज नोन एज द सप्लीमेंटल कैपिटल फॉर द बैंक देन आई हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट कि टियर वन कैपिटल क्या होता है और टियर टू कैपिटल के अंदर क्या क्या चीजें आती हैं। सो आई सेड दैट टियर वन कैपिटल इज ऑफ बेटर क्वालिटी एज कंपेयर टू टियर टू बिकॉज इट इंक्लूड्स ऑफ आइटम्स सच एज कॉमन स्टॉक्स पेन इन सरप्लस रिटेन अर्निंग परपेचुअल नॉन क्यूमुलेटिव दैट इज एनी डिविडेंड ऑन सच प्रेफर्ड स्टॉक्स और ऑन सच प्रेफरेंस शेयर विल नॉट बी क्यूमुलेटेड ठीक है गुडविल एंड वी नीड टू सब्सट्रैक्ट गुडविल एंड अदर इंटेंजिबल एसेट्स सो क्लियरली फ्रॉम दिस डेफिनेशन यू कैन सी द टियर वन कैपिटल do not create any kind of obligation for the banks in the future right aapko equity shares hai preference shares bhi hai to us pe jo bhi dividend hoga these are not going to be accumulated or added up year added up year on year theek hai however tier 2 capital which is a supplemental capital includes cumulative preference perpetual preference shares subordinated debt instruments hybrid instruments and other revaluation reserves basic aapne bata diya then we, you can talk about the norms the prescription given by it so it says a basel 3 norms requires banks to maintain at least 6% of tier 1 capital rbi requires 7% and a capital adequacy ratio of 10.5 rbi requires 11.5% of the risk weighted assets however आर की उन्होंने बात करी है कि सेवन परसेंट ये चाहिए टू परसेंट टीयर टू कैपिटल होनी चाहिए और सी आर ए आर रेशो इलेवन पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट होना चाहिए सिर्फ टॉक्ट अबाउट द प्रिस्क्रिप्शन गिवन बाई बेजल नॉम्स एंड वॉट हैज बिन अडॉप्टेड इन इंडिया बाई आर बी आई ठीक है नाउ हेयर कम्स योर एनालिसिस पार्ट अब आप यहाँ पे एनालिसिस करने वाले हो सो यू कैन ऑल्सो गिव अ सेपरेट हेडिंग विच बैंक इज बेटर एंड देन यू कैन मेक एन एनालिसिस बेस्ड ऑन द डेफिनेशन एंड वट डू यू थिंक कुड बी अ बेटर बैंक बेस्ड ऑन tier 1 and tier 2 so here i have mentioned that all the banks have maintained so this also becomes important aap pehle examiner ko bata rahe ho rahe ho that you are able to identify that based on the basel norms and rbi regulation banks have maintained the minimum requirement because bank a ke paas 14% hai 11% hai b or c ke paas aur tier 2 capital bhi minimum 2% maintain kiya hua hai and but you are also saying that in case of tier 1 capital bank a has the highest and in case of tier to capital bank b has the highest at 9% theek hai however agar aap comparison kar rahe ho in that case you will have to take into consideration the fact that tier 1 capital is more reliable is of more supreme quality as compared to the tier 2 capital therefore agar aapko ek answer dena hai you are going to say that tier 1 that capital which is maintained highest by bank a is better therefore bank a is better in terms of safety and soundness as compared to the other banks sabne minimum maintain kiya hai maximum tier 1 bank a ne maintain kiya hai therefore bank a is better theek hai also agar hum to iska kya matlab hua that as bank a is higher percentage it will be in a better position to absorb any kind of asset shocks you should also mention that bank b is better than bank c because no doubt b and c has the same level of tier 1 but bank b has a higher percentage of tier 2 as compared to bank c to aapne bas ye nahi bataya ki kaun sa bank better hai you have also given a comparison relative comparison for all these three banks in your answer 
Let's move forward to the second point, which is counter cyclical capital buffer. We have all talked about the explanation aapko pe rikhna hai, that it was introduced as an additional reserve, that banks are required to be maintained uh, in the range of 0 to 2.5% and such capital should be maintained in terms of tier 1 capital. So these are all keywords that you are mentioning it here and such capital should be maintained during the period of economic expansion. Theke? Now, you are also talking about the objective why CCYB was introduced. So, hereby you can say that banks are required to build up a buffer so that they can make use of this buffer in times in difficult times. Also, it tries to restrict the bank from indulging into any other indiscriminate or lax lending practices which we saw in the global financial crisis ke time. Pe dekhe the. And therefore, it can do away with any kind of system wide risk ya systemic risk na ho iske liye banks ke paas jo bhi excess capital hote hain usko indiscriminate lending ki taraf na le jaakar usko aap buffer ke taur pe reserves ke taur pe store karke rakhoge to be used in terms of any kind of external uh, or economic crisis or shocks now, ab aapne CCYB, CCYC bhi explain kar diya. Now, you're going to compare. So, here you can say that since Bank C, jo aapko hume information mila hua tha yaha pe, so they have written that C is greater than B and B is greater than A. So, based on this, we can say that since Bank C has more of counter cyclical capital buffer, that means it is in a better position to withstand or to be resilient enough in case of any financial or economic crisis or any business cycle related risk. Therefore, Bank C will be more safe and sound as compared to Bank B than fo followed by Bank A. Right? So, simple you have explained kiya aur analysis and analysis. Third, that we are going to talk about in our answer would be off balance sheet activities. Again, you need to explain. Jo bhi humne baat kari thi ki uh, contingent assets or liabilities hoti hai. These are high risk investments and they can create certain kind of obligation on the bank. Since we do not know what would be the level of the exposure of such off balance sheet activities, therefore we make use of a conversion factor so that we can convert them into a potential on balance sheet exposure. Or fir hum uske basis pe kya kar sakte hai? Apne liye capital adequate capital maintain kar sakte hai so that in case if such off balance sheet activities becomes true or comes into reality then we have enough capital or adequate capital to fight back or withstand these financial risk and shocks Okay, so this is mentioned hua hai, that these are activities that have the feature of representing contingent assets or liabilities. But in many sare cases, mein it is basically or mostly contingent liabilities. Assets are no problem, nahi hai. money or things will be coming into the company. But in case of liabilities, it creates an obligation. So banks should have minimum capital with them, should have adequate capital with them. And therefore, the exposure is so big. We do not know the level of the exposure. They are considered to be high risk activities okay or conversion factor ke basis pe we are gonna convert now we are going to give our explanation analysis karenge which bank is better so aap analysis kaise karoge sabse pehle humne question dekha tha question mein diya hua tha ki uh, bank a has higher exposure to off balance sheet activities as compared to bank c bank b and followed by bank c so we can say that jiska kam exposure hoga wo bank better hoga in terms of safety and soundness so here I've written that since bank A has the highest exposure to off balance sheet activity, but you should also keep in mind that we do not know the exposure, ki exposure kitna dense hai, kya ye bohat highly impact karega bank ko ya nahi karega, that is going to depend upon the conversion factor, therefore solely on the basis of the information that is given to you, that is the level of exposure to off balance sheet activity, whereby bank A has the highest and bank C has the lowest, we can say that the bank which has the lowest exposure to the off balance sheet activities, that is bank C is better, Theke? comparatively better, subject अब यहाँ पे आपको बस यहाँ पे stop नहीं करना है. These are simple things, right? जो आपको direct दिख रहा है. How are you going to outstand your answer? Different कैसे बना सकते हो? Then you can say that it is better because it has a lowest exposure. 
but it is completely subjective to the state whether the 19% capital maintained by bank a no not bank a has a higher exposure to off balance sheet activities but it also has a higher percentage of capital maintained in terms of tier 1 and tier 2 capital so iske bare mein agar hum isko ignore bhi kare ignore karke hi hum bol sakte hain ki bank c better hai however the answer is completely sub subjective depending upon the conversion factor the level of risk associated with such activities as well as the level of capital maintained by these banks to ye contrast bhi aapko apne answers mein reflect karne hain so that the examiner knows that you know the topic in and out and for this answer the contrast that you have provided in your answer the examiner is going to give you additional bonus point because here it shows your analytical skills it shows that you can analyze an answer critically राइट सो लेट्स मूव फॉरवर्ड अब हमें क्या करना है नेक्स्ट वी हैव टू गिव एन आंसर कंक्लूडिंग लाइंस हमें लिखनी है सो so, आपको समझ में आ गया होगा आई होप कि आपको ऐसे आंसर कैसे करने हैं द आंसर इज वेरी सिंपल जो आपको डिस्क्रिप्टिव जनरल एक स्टेटमेंट देकर आंसर देना होता है वही लिखना है बट यू जस्ट नीडेड टू शो योर और आउट आउट शो योर एनालिटिकल स्किल्स ऑफ आंसरिंग क्वेश्चन वेयर बाई यू कैन प्रोवाइड क्रिटिकली एनालाइज अ क्वेश्चन एंड प्रोवाइड द कॉन्ट्रास्ट विद द गिवन इन्फॉर्मेशन ठीक है तो इसको हम कंक्लूड कैसे करेंगे सो वी आर गन कंक्लूड बाई सेंग दैट इट शुड ऑल्सो बी नोटेड दैट मियरली हैविंग हायर कैपिटल एडुकेसी रेशियो और टीयर वन टीयर टू कैपिटल डज और काउंटर साइक्लिकल कैपिटल बफर डज नॉट मेक द बैंक सेफ दिस वी हैव सीन इन द केस ऑफ ग्लोबल फाइनेंशियल क्राइसिस दिस वी हैव ऑल्सो सीन इन द केस ऑफ सिलिकन वैली बैंक आप सबको पता है सिलिकन वैली बैंक का यू ऑल मस्ट हैव रेड अबाउट दिस इन योर फाइनेंस करेंट अफेयर्स क्लासेस राइट right? बहुत बड़ा केस था सिलिकॉन वैली बैंक का अगर मैं आपको इनकी डेटा दिखाऊं डिसंबर 31 2022 की ये डेटा है इफ यू सी दैट द बेजल मिनिमम रिक्वायर्ड फॉर मेंटेनिंग कॉमन इक्विटी टीयर वन कैपिटल इज 4.5 एंड टीयर वन एट द रेट ऑफ सिक्स और टोटल हमें कितना मेंटेन करना है एट ये हमने अभी पढ़ा है वट वॉज द लेवल मेंटेन बाई द सिलिकॉन वैली बैंक आप दोनों जगह देख सकते हो द सिलिकॉन वैली बैंक एज वेल एज द होल्डिंग ग्रुप द ग्रुप एज अ होल they have maintained huge levels of capital in terms of tier 1 capital common equity capital and total capital they have maintained almost double 8% maintain karna tha inhone 16% maintain kiya hua hai similarly for silicon valley bank however crisis happens right so therefore what else is required apart from all these regulations so apart from all these regulations much more is required in terms of micro and macro prudential regulation so this is such a beautiful conclusion or lines that you can conclude your answer isko examiner ko bata raha hai that yes you understand it well you understand it in and out you, you are not just reading or mugging up the things or memorizing things but you are also thinking analytically and you are going to work in on one of these regulatory bodies wahan pe yahi cheez chahiye hogi this analytical skills is very much required so that you can come up with any kind of policy decisions theek hai so micro prudential regulations macro prudential regulations should be taken up by rbi so rbi kya kar sakti hai individual banks ke liye micro regulations la sakti hai and in order to ensure that overall the financial system is resilient and strong enough to absorb any kind of shocks any kind of uh, any kind of financial or economic crisis macro prudential regulations should also be put in forward by the regulator that is rbi so this is how you can uh, conclude your answer i hope you enjoyed the session and you like uh, the answer that we have discussed in case if you have anything to share to uh, to ask or even if you want to uh, give your feedback you have you your feel you feel free to make use of the comment section so this was this was all for today uh, take care keep studying and bye bye